Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I am one of those people who looks at weigh-ins, who looks at fighters' body types, and who asks questions about whether a fighter who's tall and slender can protect his body against a vicious body puncher. I have that question here. The bet I'm recommending, the hedge I'm recommending, well, put it this way, if I had one bet to make, it would be on Sergei Rabchenko to beat Tony Harrison. Right? The way I'm going to play it is Rabchenko by KO. By KO. Right? Hedged with Harrison simply to win the fight if the odds allow it. If they don't, then I'm just going to take Rabchenko to win the fight. Here's why I expect Rabchenko to win. Just looking at body types. Harrison, who has been successful in his career, Right? Harrison is 6'1". 6'1". Weighs 154 pounds. 6'1", 154. Right? Now he has fast hands. He throws combinations. He's well connected. He's with Al Heyman. But I gotta tell you, he's slender. Right? He's really slender. He looks small to me, small boned, right? He likes to go in and out, but he's not sudden. This isn't Sean Porter, right? This is a guy who you can see when he's coming. In my opinion, he's a good technician, right? He can block shots, and he relies on pace. In other words, he's in better shape than you are. He throws more punches than you do. You find yourself forced to block a lot of his shots. Once he gets going, he's hard to stop. Right? Let's talk about the bat. He gets knocked down by Willie Nelson, an even taller fighter, if you could believe that. Right? He loses his equilibrium. Right? In my opinion, he was conscious but he lost control of his body. The film is up here on YouTube. To me, that's troubling. Right? To me, that's troubling. Because it's the kind of thing where, you know, he can be awake. And his body can say, hey, we're not getting off the canvas. Right? He gets off the canvas against Nelson. He turns around and looks at the uh, crowd. Obviously, he's still somewhat disoriented. The referee calls the fight, right? That's his lone loss. It was a fight in which he was winning. Nonetheless, I consider the knockdown to be troubling just the way his body looks going down, right? Let me say this too. He's an action fighter. In other words, you get the feeling that he has to be doing something in the ring. He's not a guy who can stay away win slow rounds. He doesn't like slow rounds. Every round has to be medium to fast. He has to engage with you. Now that's okay if you're fighting a feather-fisted opponent, some light hitter. That's not okay when you're fighting a brutal puncher. And that's who Rabchenko is. He's not only a brutal puncher, he's a brutal body puncher, fighting a slender opponent. Now, he fought Anthony Mundine. Understand Mundine's background, right? Mundine has fought people like Shane Mosley, Daniel Gill multiple times, Danny Green, right? Mundine, quite frankly, in the entire sport, as I see it, and I understand I'm a minority voice, is one of the savvier guys 
in the sport of boxing, right? He's one of the more clever, creative fighters out there, right? Mundine, who has had a long career and has fought a lot of tough guys, claims that Rabchenko is the hardest body puncher he's faced. Think about that. The hardest body puncher he's faced. Not Shane Mosley. This guy. Mundine, quite frankly, was tested severely by this young lion. Right? Mundine barely eked out a win in that match. So let me say, I think Rabchenko has a lumberjack's personality. Just imagine you have an axe and there's a big redwood in front of you and you're going to try to chop it down, right? You don't expect the tree to fall the first time you swing the axe. You don't expect the tree to fall the tenth time you swing the axe. You understand that you need to bring a sandwich. You need to bring a lunch bucket with you because it's going to take some time. You're going to have to swing that axe quite a few times. Right? But your game is a long game. Right? Even if it takes an hour, you're going to chop down this tree. That's the way lumberjacks think. That's the way body punchers think. Right? Rabchenko doesn't care about the fact that the fight's in Barclays. He couldn't care less that Tony Harrison is one of the jewels of the Al Heyman empire. Couldn't care less. Right? This is a guy who's already traveled to Australia to fight Anthony Mundine. The bright lights in the big city are not going to get to this guy. If he comes out and loses the first three or four rounds, you know what? He understands. This might take a few rounds. Right, figuratively speaking, he's packed a lunch for this fight. I think sooner or later he's going to slow down Tony Harrison. Right, I personally will be surprised if he doesn't win this fight by stoppage. I don't think Harrison has been hit the way he's going to get hit in this fight. I don't care how good you are when you're 6'1 and weigh 154 pounds. You don't have a lot of fat shielding your rib cage. I know we're in an era where everyone looks like Anthony Joshua. Everyone looks like a weightlifter. Maybe that's not great for boxing. Right? Maybe guys with a little bit of body fat actually have a little bit more body armor. I think Harrison gets caught here. If I had one bet to make, it'd be Rabchenko to win. If the odds allow a hedge, I'll take Rabchenko by KO. Hedge with Harrison simply to win the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Good luck.